Welcome back, America, to you. are joined now by United States Senator Tom Cotton. You know him as a regular guest on the show, but he is also now an author. His brand new book, Sacred Duty, comes out on May 14th. You should order it now at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, any bookstore in the United States in order to give it to family and friends, especially those on active duty, those who have served, and their family. Uh, I'll be hosting Tom Cotton, by the way, May 29th at the Nixon Library in Yorba Linda, if you want to come uh, buy a book and get him to sign it, he'll stay there until 4 or 5 in the morning, won't you, Senator? <laughs> Thanks, uh, Hugh, for having me on and for mentioning Sacred Duty, my new book, which will be out a week from today. I look forward to discussing it on air next week and then being out in your Belinda at the end of the month, as well as the Reagan Library, uh, to speak about the old guard of Arlington and how we honor our nation's follow, fallen heroes. And yes, indeed, uh, sign books until the last dog dies. You know, you know that uh, all your other interviewers are not going to have to read the book, but I am going to have read the book, so you better be on your toes when you come and talk to me about the old guard, as sharp as they are when they turn out every day. I, I got you already once in a little Twitter exchange on where the pistols came from, but I'll tell people that story next week. Important news this morning. Important news this morning. Your buddy, Mike Pompeo, uh, just announced he's not going to Berlin. Now, there are conflicting reports whether he's coming home or going on to Russia. Do you know what he's doing? Well, uh, you, I'm not sure. I'd want to go to Berlin if either if I were the secretary. <laughs> well, Rick Grinnell's there. But, you know, it's fun to see Rick. Well, I'd let Rick do that work. But <clears throat> nice article by Walter Russell Mead, uh, by yes, the way, it was. the Wall Street yes, Journal today about Ambassador Grinnell. So I, I know that Secretary Pompeo, whom I spoke over the weekend before he left, was in uh, Finland for the Arctic Conference um, to address some of Russia and China's wrongdoing up in the high north. And then he was going on to both uh, Germany, the United Kingdom, and then finally to Denmark as well to address what China is up to in Greenland, trying to get a foothold in North America and corner the market on more rare materials. Um, but he's canceled the Germany trip. And uh, I'm not sure if he's going to still go to the United Kingdom and to Denmark. Um, but uh, I will wait and see where his travels take him. Uh, do you believe that the Lincoln has been dispatched as a head fake uh, to Iran? They are reacting very negatively good or as a uh, as part of a, a, a actual impending military action there. The head fake being, of course, maybe we're moving in Venezuela. What, what's your assessment of our situation well, right now with dual crises? Hugh, in general, presidents don't deploy aircraft carriers as head fakes. And Iran is usually up to no good in the Middle East, and there appear to have been credible reports that they might have been, uh, in particular, planning some kind of attacks either directly through some of their uh, shock troops in the Quds Force, the, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, or through Iraqi paramilitary organizations. And uh, I believe what the president and the secretary of State and the Acting Secretary of Defense wanted to indicate to Iran is that there would be grave consequences uh, if Iran or Iranian-sponsored militias were to launch any kind of attack against American troops or American interest in the region. And what do you understand to be the situation vis-a-vis -vis Venezuela at this point? Uh, well, it's still very unstable and uncertain, Hugh. Um, as has been well established, some, an exchange I had with the Southern Command combatant commander about six weeks ago put a point on this. Uh, Nicolas Maduro is not really in control of his own personal safety, much less his government and his country. Um, he lays his head down to sleep every night on his pillow and wakes up only by the grace of the C Cuban security forces that surround him as his virtual secret service. Um, so even if Nicolas Maduro wanted to cede power to Juan Guaido, the legitimate leader of Venezuela, recognized by the United States and most of the civilized world, it's not clear that Cuba, Russia, and China would allow him to cede that power. All right, last question, Senator Cotton. We'll talk at length next week about sacred duty. People can order it right now, though, over at Amazon. Uh, do you expect any kind of American military action imminently in Venezuela? Hugh, I, I wouldn't say I expect anything imminently, but I also don't expect the president to take military action off the table in Venezuela, nor should he, uh, nor for that matter should he ever take military action off the table whenever American interests are imperiled, as they are in Venezuela, with the potential for Russia and China gaining a foothold just outside the Panama Canal uh, in our own hemisphere. Um, the, hopefully the, what will happen in Venezuela is a peaceful resolution and Nicolas Maduro will leave power and the Venezuelan people can escape from the misery of Chavisto socialism. 
And well, we hope so too. We will see you next week talking about Sacred Duty. I hope you bring me the large print edition. You know, as you get a little older, those larger print editions are useful. That's what they've got over at Amazon. Tom Cotton is a senator from Arkansas. He's now the author of Sacred Duty. Go get Sacred Duty right now. And I said Sacred Duty seven times, so he made the lunch rule work. Stay tuned, America.